Coming up, I step on some wood. There's blood. I successfully wounded myself with a screwdriver. We delete some rust. And we are hunting down a ferocious creature. I think he sees me. Welcome back to the second part of Project Marbay. This lovely one owner E30-320i has been off the road for the past 10 years and now it's time to give it some love. The plan is to perform a thorough service and while at it do preventive maintenance. Starting off with the timing belt. And this is a beautiful pile of genuine OE and OEM parts that we're going to throw in this car. First order of business, remove the hood. We need to disconnect the windshield washer hose and some wires. Disconnect the hose at the pump. Cap. Pull it out. Connector. Let's get the tools. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here for the ground. Brilliant. Slowly pull the cable out. Gotta be careful with the old wires. I'm gonna disconnect the hinge here. That way I don't have to mess around with the alignment of the hood. I'm gonna disconnect the shock. Good. Drop it. There you go. And the E30 is hoodless. Look how much space for activities we have. Let's get cracking. Our primary goal is to replace the timing belt, but we're also going to be doing a bunch of preventative maintenance. So I'm going to start removing some of this stuff, starting with the fan clutch, draining the coolant, ignition wires, and the air filter box. Oh, you just let go. How convenient. 1998, so he was replaced once. I think now we're gonna drain the coolant. Why is the hose clamp facing down? Jiggle, jiggle. Well, slap me silly and call me willy. Most of it went into the pan. That's a first. There we are. The radiator is from 2007, looks in decent condition, so we're not gonna replace it. I'm not sure what's happening, but most of the coolant seems to be going into the pan. I think next step, let's remove the air filter box. This is the wire for the coil. Let's remove that. Let's mark the vacuum lines, which need to be replaced. Jeez, this thing is heavy. This is the air filter. Pretty dirty and old. The air filter box, it's looking pretty ugly and rusty, so I think I'm gonna disassemble this all the way and drop it off a part according, just to freshen it up a little bit. Now we're gonna remove the distributor cap. We also have to pay attention on ignition timing. Once we remove the timing belt, the old pump pulley is going to be able to spin freely and it can mess up the ignition timing. All right, disconnect wires from the spark plugs. Ooh, that flew off. Nope, just dropped it. Ooh, baby, come back. Now it's free to come out. And now we're gonna remove the one and only accessory belt. That belt is pretty shot. Now we can get that out of the way. All right, I gotta ride down to buy that ground strap. Remove this plastic or rubber, whatever it is. That's the water pump, pull it off. Yeah, that is the timing belt. It actually 
doesn't look bad at all gates this was the old style gear sprocket thing so i bought a replacement one the newer one that we're going to install here and now we're going to remove the crank pulley get the sensor out of the way i need to hold the crank like that and undo the bolts rubber mallet yep as this car doesn't have any other belts this is the harmonic balancer there it is there's the pin on the bottom so you cannot put it the wrong way in now i'm gonna move the rotor arm and then remove this cover so we can see the mark on the distributor body easier for ignition timing there it is take the cap off cover put this back in and there you can see the mark on the distributor body for ignition timing and now i'm going to rotate the engine at the crank until we are at top dead center and all of the marks here and here and there line up might need to remove the spark plugs because of compression but let's see that's perfect according to my repair manual the rotor arm and the mark on the distributor body should line up but this one well, it's difficult to catch the angle, but they're not exactly lined up. This seems like it needs to go a little bit more like that to be lined up. And now because I want to replace this gear and the camshaft seal that's behind it, we're going to loosen these bolts. Make sure the hole is clean. And now we need to undo this bolt before we remove the tank belt, because I can hold the crank while I'm doing this bolt. There we are. Uh, there we are. So just gonna leave it loose like that. I need to make sure once again that the time wasn't disrupted. Here you can see the mark on the crank lined up and on the camshaft pulley as well. And now we're gonna remove the tension from the timing belt and remove the tensioner. 13 millimeter here. So get the pin and the spring. There it is. And finally the tensioner out. It's actually good and now we can get the timing belt off that's it that is the rubber timing belt that drives this engine and if this snaps you can destroy your engine pretty much that being said this one is in really really good condition but given that it's 10 15 i don't know how many years old we have to replace it there is no point in risking this snapping and killing this lovely engine. And now we're gonna get the camshaft gear out. So that's our camshaft seal. And it looks like it's, it's a bit wet. So it is a good thing that we're in here replacing it. So this is the old camshaft pulley or gear. And I read online that these like to snap. And this is the newer one, as you can see much sturdier. So that's the one that we are going to install. Now we need to carefully start prying it off. Up there. There we are. First things first, clean it up. Good, now we need to knock out that seal. There we are. It is out. Just smack it on the edge with the screwdriver and it'll come out. Now I need to give this a thorough clean. And then this is the new seal and O-ring. This is now ready to take the new seal. Plenty of oil. Like that. And gently tap it in. Perfect. That is now fully seated. And that's the O-ring and camshaft seal replaced. Yep, perfect. And I'll slowly tighten it. Perfect. That's all there is to it. Really easy and really good thing to do when you do the timing belt. Now you're gonna remove the water pump. 
and all more coolant should come out. Yep. It's from 1990. 31-year-old water pump. Now I need to clean this up. 3M bristle disc. Let's see. Suck up all of that dirt. One last clean. This is the old pump. Here's the new one, OEM Ina. Looks lovely. And this is the gasket that comes with this pump. And it is just a plain paper gasket. And I have zero confidence in that, so I'm not gonna use it. Instead, I'm gonna use a thin layer of Reinzel seal. With this, I know it's never gonna leak. And I actually tried to get this one directly from the dealer, because original gasket, I think it's a bit better, but it's no longer available. So, Reinzel seal, it is. So we're going to apply a very thin layer. Some government folks are measuring and testing water in the yard. Now we're gonna apply the same on the block. Again, a very thin layer. Perfect. Slowly position the pump. Now a bit of torque. Torqued. I'm not using a torque wrench here because I know by hand how much I need to go. So here's the updated camshaft gear. And we are not gonna tighten it at this point because if I do that, I'm gonna move the camshaft. So just by hand. And once we put the belt on, then I can torque it to proper spec. And now we're going to replace the oil gear pulley because it too is the old style. And I found a post on forum where one of these actually broke. Then the engine skipped the timing and basically destroyed the engine, bent the valves and so on. So we definitely want to replace this one as well. There we go. Here you can see the difference between the old one and the new one. This is much sturdier design and it's not going to break. New hardware as well, let's install it. So line up the pin. So we're gonna give it a bit of torque now, and then we'll fully torque it once we have the timing belt on. Now we're going to install a brand new tensioner, pin, and the spring. So I'm gonna tension the tensioner as far as I can, and then snug up the bolt so it holds it there. Here's the new timing belt, OE Continental. You can also use gates, it's really good quality as well. And now it's the important part where we need to make sure that the cam pulley is lined up with the mark on the head, the crank pulley, and in this case the distributor, that the rotor arm is pointing on the mark on the distributor body, which it is. You can adjust it by moving the oil pump pulley, or you can do it later by loosening the body of the distributor. First we're gonna start around the crank, and we need to make sure it's fully seated. So take all of the slack from the crank to the open pulley and I'll thread it around the camshaft pulley without any slack. Now I'm going to loosen the adjustment bolt which will tension the belt like that and I'll leave it loose and now we need to rotate the engine at least twice and make sure all of these marks are lining up. To rotate the engine easily I'm going to take out the spark plugs but first vacuuming. This is numero uno. Not looking good. Very fuely. Well, that's the last one. Let's see what the cylinders look like. This one is stopped at center, as it should be. Lots of carbon, but cylinder walls look perfect. Yeah, everything looks good in there. You can see that the cylinder walls look perfect. A bit of carbon buildup on the pistons but a bit of fast driving on the Autobahn will clean that up. With the spark plugs out of the engine, now we can rotate the engine clockwise. Perfectly lined up. That's once, we're gonna do it twice, and then we can tighten all of the bolts. There as well on the crank, and the rotor arm is lined up as well. Time to tighten the bolts. Perfection. I'm gonna do one more rotation just because. And everything is still perfect. And that's the timing belt job done. New spark plug going in. Goes back to harmonic denser.
can put back the sensor. Now I'm gonna replace the thermostat, so I'm gonna get the fuel line out of the way. Gonna replace that hose in a bit. Brand new thermostat. Cleaned up the housing. Now I'm going to replace this intake boot and a bunch of these old vacuum lines. That's bad. It's cracked. So I bought this hose from the dealer. Now I can just cut it to size. Brand new hose clamp. So I replaced a bunch of these vacuum lines and used quality stainless steel clamps. Also the small lines, all of them were perished as well. And now I'm gonna replace the fuel lines. This one is too brittle. That one is too soft, so I'm gonna replace everything all around, including the fuel filter here. For the fuel lines, I'm using Line 2240.0600. This is external fuel line, heat resistant up to around 130 degrees Celsius, so I can use it in the engine bay. And for the clamps, I'm using high quality ABBA clamps. These are made in Sweden and really good quality. They also look pretty. <sighs> hell. I successfully wounded myself with a screwdriver. But you know, it's not a project car unless you shed some blood. Look at the color of this fuel. That's nasty. Really nasty. And this is why it's really important to replace fuel filter once in a while. And don't worry, we're also going to look inside the fuel tank, replace the in-tank fuel pump and the external one as well. But this looks like it's a bit rusty. I don't know, but it ain't good. <sighs> well, that hurt. There's just hoses and clamps everywhere. All right, new fuel filter going in. I can't see nothing. <clears throat> that's the fuel filter replaced. And that's all of the soft fuel lines in the engine bay replaced. The feed lines as well as the return lines. Brand new intake boot. Gah. Where did I put the clamp? By far my least favorite part, cleaning up the engine bay. And that should do it, just a bit more cleaner and not dusty. I'm not going for a showroom finish, just cleanish. And bear in mind that I still need to remove the intake manifold, wall cover, and then the upper timing cover, lower one as well. And all of that is gonna end up in my vapor blasting cabinet and it's gonna look spectacular. But for now, this should do it. Donde esta mi ten milimetro? Is that a mouse i have a mouse in the shop that i'm hunting i have traps set up all over the place now i'm gonna replace two ground cables this one is for the alternator and this one is from the frame to the old pan you can see them right over there there's one and there's three what kind of animal torque this oh i'm gonna smack my fingers that's done and now the valve cover ground here are the ignition parts all oe bosch Rotor cap, ignition coil, rotor arm, and new ignition wires. Let's quickly swap out the coil. That's part of preventive maintenance. Uh-oh. Was that my mouse trap? Will it go in? Did I scare him? Come on, you bastard. I put pizza cheese. I think he sees me. Ah, oh, if I were a hunter, I wouldn't be a very good one. Should have left him alone. But he'll come back. He'll come back. That's the coil done. The rotor arm. Press the cover. Beautiful. So the bastard is toying with me. 
It's over there in that corner now. Look at him. Come on, buddy. Venga aquí. Yeah, as I said, I wouldn't be a very good hunter. Your wire is going in. He was very close to going in. We caught supper, boys. No more pooping on my floor, my friend. I didn't have the guts to kill the little fella, so I bought one of these, what they call, humane traps. Put some food into it. It's actually pizza cheese, which I had for lunch. Apparently, he likes it as well. And now I'm gonna go and throw it into the river. No, I'm gonna go and release it into the woods. That way, it can get eaten by a bear or a duck. At least has a fighting chance. So let's do that. We arrived at the Amazon rainforest. Well, as close as we can get to it. It's a bit of a distance, you know. Let me get the stallion. He already took a giant dump in here, so that's great. But you had fun, didn't you? Driving on the Autobahn, jamming to my music, and now I sentence you to freedom. How do you open this? Go on, come on, shoo, get out of here. And I'm gonna leave that pizza cheese here in case you wanna come back and taste some of that. Adios, my tiny friend. With the Bear Grylls adventure in the books, let's proceed. Water pump pulley, which I had powder coated, just because it looks lovely. Dun, 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 dun. Time for the new belt. This is Bill Gates. Oh boy, I have a feeling that's gonna snap. Oh yeah, that's good. Houston, we have a problem. The adjustment bolt has disintegrated. And this belt, it is slightly longer than the old one, for whatever reason. So let's see if I can still put that one. This bolt here is eaten, it's falling apart, so I can't tighten it enough to use the new belt. So I'm gonna order new parts to replace this bracket, this bolt, nut, whatever it is, and then I can put the new belt on. The radiator goes back, I actually flushed it a couple of times. So we're going with all brand new coolant hoses and clamps, of course. Ah, oh, there goes my skin. Need to replace coolant level sensor. Come to think of it, I'm gonna clean this first. This is as clean as it's going to get at this point. Brand new coolant sensor. Coolant, new coolant sensor ain't gonna work. It's different connection and it's longer as well. So that's garbage. Old one it is. Next up, the air filter box, and let me show you what that looks like now. Brand new air filter. <sighs> What's wrong with that picture? How did I get that wrong? Old one it is for now. The thing that I don't understand about E30 there's so many different parts. How did I order a wrong air filter? I used real OEM and still I got it wrong. This mass air filter, it weighs about 15 kilograms. It was built to survive landmines and get run over by a tank. You got higher power. Time for the coolant. Crack open that bleed nipple. If I'm shushing more than usual, that's because I bit my bottom lip while I was eating my homemade sandwich from the bakery this morning. Anyway, let's hear it run. I think I didn't forget to reconnect anything, but we'll find out. It takes a bit to build up fuel pressure because we replaced the filter. I don't know why is the idle so high. the idle so high. That's just coolant and stuff burning off. This car was idling high even before I did all of this work. Now it just seems to be a bit worse, which is great. So I'm going to do some troubleshooting and get back to you in a bit. 3000 hours later, Googling on Google and I found what seems to be the problem. So it was idling constantly very high around 1500 RPM, 
even since I got it, since we first started a car. And usually when it warms up, it kind of goes away, but when you press the pedal, it's still there. And now it's just always there. So it could be vacuum leaks, but I don't think so. There's a stupid valve. They call it additional side air valve and air goes through it as well as the coolant. It has a little thermostat inside and it serves to as a warm up procedure for the car. So when you turn the car, it's gonna idle a bit higher until it warms up and then once the coolant is hot enough, it's gonna push the thermostat, close it or open it, I don't know, and the air is not gonna go through it. And then the idle is gonna come down. The problem is, what I found on forums right now, that is a very weak spot on these engines because when they sit, that just gets ruined and this car was sitting for 10 years. So what I did now is kinda eliminate it, remove the air hose going to it and plugged it. So have a listen. Purring like a kitten. It's maybe idling even too low. But it's working fine. It's not idling like a lunatic. So that's the weird looking thing over there. The first two lines, that's coolant, and the two lines on the back, that's air. So I blocked off the air, as you can see here, and down there, and now it's idling totally fine. Normally, you just replace that and you're good to go. The problem is that thing has been discontinued for many many years now i think for e28 it was still available up until a couple of years ago but that's gone too so you cannot buy that brand new and used they're all gonna be exactly the same so not sure what to do here anyway at least i found the source of my problem and the engine is working beautifully This is the main issue when working on old cars the parts that you need to fix them are no longer available it's not exactly bmw's fault because I've talked to BMW Classic about this. The problem is the manufacturers that made these parts 30, 40 years ago, they're no longer in business. They don't exist. And finding someone else to reproduce it, it's the difficult part because BMW cannot order 500,000 of these. They're never gonna sell it. They're gonna order a smaller amount, five, 6,000, something like that. But no one wants to make that because it's too small amount of number for production. And that's how it is with many of these parts. It's a couple of days later, the engine is completely cold, which is important because now we're going to adjust the valves. Hey, I was looking for that. Everything looks good. It's clean. Michelle definitely kept up with the old changes. The lobes that I can see here look perfect. Now we're gonna rotate the engine by hand until the cam lobe, the tip of the camshaft is pointing downwards, and then we can adjust the clearance on that valve. Let's do this one here. Two tools we need now, 10 millimeter wrench and a filler gauge, 0.25 millimeters. So this is the ticking noise you hear at idle. So get the filler gauge in here. This feels too loose. So loosen the nut. Now I want to get an Allen key and stuck it into the hole here. That way we can adjust the eccentric millionaire. This way too loose. So now I can't move my filler gauge. That's way too tight. We want to feel a slight drag. Once you think you got it right, we need to tighten the nut, inspect it again. You just want to feel a slight drag and that's it. Tighten it all the way. Mark it and move to the next one. Finished adjusting all of them, all 12. And now I'm going to go one more round and just double check everything and mark it twice. As I said, slight drag and you're perfect. All right, double checked all of them. They're perfectly adjusted. And now we can replace the valve cover gasket. That's the old one out. Prep the surface. New wall cover gasket. <sighs> Easiest wall cover in the world. Crisscross. All right, the air slide valve thingy is still blocked off. So let's hear the cold start now.
So my right foot needs to be the air slide valve. Sounds sweet. Why is the... Now I'm gonna let the engine warm up and then we're gonna drain the oil, drop the oil pan to replace the gasket. Smack. Very black. Get the air filter box out of the way. In order to remove the oil pan, we need to slightly lower the steering rack and the subframe, and that way the oil pan can clear the oil pump and it can come out. I've also seen on the forums people dropping the oil pump into the oil pan and then that way pulling the oil pan out and not doing any of the stuff that I'm about to do now. But I'm just not gonna mess around with that because it's really difficult to put that oil pan back properly when you have like that much space. Now I'm gonna remove engine mount nuts and then I can support the engine from the top. All right, so now we're gonna slightly start raising the engine. All right, that should do it for now. We can go underneath, and I think I might not need to drop the subframe and the steering rack because I lifted the engine enough so you can clear the oil pump. But let's find out. Remove this cover first. Oh my God. That's stripped. So I'm just gonna cut it off flush and then it'll come out that way. And here we are. There's our broken, whoa, broken stud. Gonna extract that later and order a new one. We have a vigorous leak, but where is it coming from? Oil pan or the big prize rear main seal. Need to disconnect the ground and oil level sensor. Let's see if this is going to be enough to clear the oil pan. If not, I'm gonna have to remove the subframe. Don't think this will be enough to clear the pump? Absolutely not. So this ain't gonna work because I can't lift it any higher than this because the exhaust is hitting the chassis. So the subframe needs to come down a little bit. Need to remove the steering shaft from the steering rack. Gonna remove it here and there's a mark on the rack here that needs to align with this line on the shaft. And that way the steering wheel is going to stay in straight position. We got it. Bit of hammering action and that's off. Let's zip off the engine mount bolts. Now the control arm bushings. Cool, now I can start unbolting the subframe and the steering rack, it's gonna come down with it. Good. That's supported. Now I can undo the subframe bolts. All right. It's one long bolt. Oh. Well, now I'm in the world of pain. Do you know what that is? That is a broken bolt. Well, this one came out. So, three removed, one snapped. 
That's our broken bolt. That's going to be loads of fun to remove. Let's do the open now and then I'm going to go home and cry because that seems like a reasonable plan. A bit varnishy and sludgy, but it looks pretty good overall. Say hello to the open. Nothing interesting in there. A bit sludgy, but not too bad for a car that's 38 years old. I'm gonna mask up and start cleaning this up. That's all nice and clean. Brand new gasket. Brand new shitty cork gasket. And to hold it in place, we're gonna use the good old zip tie trick. That's ready to go back on the car. Now we're gonna go and prep the surface on the engine. Let's see if there's anything interesting in the old pickup. Other than some gasket material, Nothing interesting in here. The gears look good, so we can put all of this back. Now I'm gonna add a bit of sealant where the cover meets the block. That's per the repair manual on the back as well. Oil pan going in. Like that, get the bolt. So now I'm gonna go randomly in crisscross pattern and then do the final torque. That's done. I'd love to proceed and put everything back together, but of course, it couldn't be that simple. Need to remove that broken bolt first, and I'm thinking the best way to proceed here is to simply weld another bolt to it. Thankfully, it didn't snap off flush, so there's enough bolts sticking out so we can weld another to it and try to remove it that way. My landlord, he's coming back on Monday. He has a welding machine, knows how to use it, so I'm gonna have him do that, and we'll try to remove it that way. Hopefully it works out because I really don't want to drill and mess around with extractors. That being said, that is the battle for the next episode. That is a wrap for this episode. I was planning to have everything back together by the end of this video, but snap bolts, they're going to hit you when you least expect it. So we're going to tackle that in the next one. Also do more maintenance, replace the fuel pump, shocks, possibly take out the transmission. That depends how the clutch behaves once we replace the slave cylinder and change the fluid and if we have a leaking rear main seal. Then we need to troubleshoot that air valve slide thingy. I'm gonna take it out, see what it looks like on the inside, but E30 folks, has anyone ever dealt with that before? If you did, shoot me a message, I'd love to hear more about it because the part doesn't exist anymore and this needs to be fixed somehow. It's going to be challenging. This video took a bit longer to make, that's because I was out of visiting my parents for about a week, so the next one should be a bit quicker, but you never know, sometimes it takes two, three weeks to do the work alone because stuff breaks, you're missing parts, it's just difficult to plan. I hope that you enjoyed this video and as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you very soon.